Welcome. In this video, we will address some common claims that are sometimes made about FL Studio 11 versus newer versions. These refer to audio quality and features. Let's start with audio quality. Perhaps you've heard it watching YouTube videos or reading social media comments. FL Studio 11 hits harder than FL Studio 20, or FL Studio 11 sounds better than FL Studio 20, or some other variation on this theme. In this video, we will prove to you why this absolutely and positively isn't the case. The main reason some people perceive the audio quality of FL Studio 11 to be better is it opens with a default template that has a simple plus 5.5 decibel volume boost. This comes from a fruity limiter on the master FX slot 8. From FL Studio 12 onward, we reset the gain on this default project to 0 decibels, meaning no change. As we all learned in the Mixing Basics series, louder often sounds better, and so it's not surprising that FL Studio 11's Basic with Limiter sounds better than FL Studio 20. Let's see by playing the same samples using the default mixer template in both. Notice FL Studio 11. Yeah, this hits harder and sounds better. FL Studio 20.9 sounds weak by comparison. However, when we apply the same 5.5 decibel master boost in FL Studio 20.9, the results are exactly the same. But we can do better than just using our ears. If we export the audio from FL Studio 20.9 and from FL Studio 11, we can perform what is known as a null test. A null test works by mixing two audio signals and flipping or inverting the polarity of one of them. The idea is, if the audio is the same, the files will completely cancel to silence, since one will be the mirror image of the other. So. Can we get that to happen with FL Studio 11 and 20? To keep things on neutral ground, I will perform the null test in the free audio editor Audacity. Here we have the audio from FL Studio 11, and here's FL Studio 20. I'm just going to play this and then invert one of them. Hmm. Dead silent. This shows the wave files from FL Studio 11 and 20.9 contain the exact same digital information and are therefore identical. Note, you can't perform null tests with audio that has randomness like reverbs, free running oscillators that change their phase from run to run, unison phase offsets or random pitch modulation. This is because at any given moment there will be differences caused by performance related changes and not audio processing. So if you repeat this test at home, please make sure that there are no randomized sources in your project. On that note, let's address another gain-related issue. In FL Studio 11, there is a bug that raises the level of all channels by 3 decibels at center pan when triangular panning law is selected. Not a big deal as you set levels to sound right, but switching to triangular panning instantly adds 3 more decibels nonetheless. A lot of users have mystified this switch over the years, describing it as warmth and low end, but these are just side effects of the gain changes. Louder sounds better. Let's go back to the simpler test project from earlier. As people claim this effect is more noticeable when you're clipping, meaning your level at the end of the master chain is over 0 decibels, and since different audio interfaces respond differently to signals over 0 decibels, 
the simplest way to get a repeatable result is to clip inside FL Studio. To clip in software, I will add a Fruity Wave Shaper to the master in both versions. The same as if we render to 16-bit wave instead of 32-bit. You can learn more about clipping in our Mixing Basics series too. Now, that's not to say that triangular panning law does nothing at all. Increased stereo width is a real difference that will also happen this way in FL Studio 20. If you only want to recreate the 3 decibel boost in FL Studio 20 though, select all active channels in your project that are panned to the center and turn them up by 3 decibels. And there you go. And of course, here's a null test showing this ends up as the same digital information too. There are also some other locations where things have changed that may cause an FL Studio 11 project to sound different in a later version. Most notably, the main audio control on the toolbar no longer responds to automation. So, if you've been turning that up in FL Studio 11 via automation, that automation will not work in the latest releases of FL Studio. It will move the control while the song is playing, but it won't print to your export. We have also improved the PDC, Plug and Delay Compensation meaning projects that have plugin latency will be far more accurately compensated in FL Studio 20 than in FL Studio 11. In some cases, that will lead to minor timing and audio differences between the programs. But this is not a quality issue. And if you're making a project from scratch in 20, they are not a factor, only when exporting older projects. Finally, let's cover some of the misunderstandings about feature changes between FL Studio 11 and later versions. With the later releases of FL Studio 11, we were planning to obsolete pre-computed effects and move them into real-time plugins. So, as an end-of-life warning, we put the pre-computed effects behind a switch in the general settings in FL Studio 11 and previous versions. In FL Studio 11, enabling this setting warned you about these effects being obsolete and not appearing in future versions of FL Studio. And indeed, in FL Studio 12, we did remove them. Oh. However, after strong customer feedback, we listened and they returned in full force with the release of FL Studio 20. The pre-computed effects are now considered permanent features of the channel sampler and audio clip generators and won't be going anywhere in the future. We've even dropped legacy from the title and they have gained some extra features like sample start and length controls. In FL Studio 12, we also played with the idea of moving the Step Sequencer Graph Editor functions to the piano roll and changed how Step Sequencer looping worked. Here too, we listened to customer feedback and they are both back, better than ever, starting from FL Studio 20.0.4 and 20.1 respectively. That is over three years ago as of the making of this video in April 2022. So if you've been sticking to FL Studio 11 because you think it sounds better or you think your pre-computed effects or step sequencer workflow is missing in later releases, I hope this video encourages you to take another look at FL Studio 20 and join us as we continue to take FL Studio into a bright future. We strongly believe in lifetime free updates because it means the FL Studio user base can keep FL Studio updated bug fixed and enjoy improvements that mean your door stays relevant and capable as times technology and music change. Better yet, it means all FL Studio customers can use the latest version. Project sharing and collaboration is greatly simplified. Lifetime free updates means what it says. It's free, so why not check out the download link in the video description and get acquainted with the amazing new features waiting for you there. We've put a link to the video playlists in the video info covering all the new features in FL Studio 12 and 20 so far. Happy music making.